welcome to this week's episode of the Camogie Report podcast. I'm delighted to be joined for my first guest by Thomas Conway of the Nina Garage and to look back on the FBD Insurance Senior Championship final, which took place on Saturday. Drum and Inch recorded a great win, um, 3.13 to 10 points to final score against Clone T. Ross Moore. Thomas, so I suppose if you're an outsider looking in and you weren't at the match and you, and you saw the full-time score, you might have thought a comfortable six-point win for our... Um, for Drum and Inch, but it was far from that. In, in, in fact, I suppose they played second fiddle to Clonty for a long periods of the game. Yeah, it, it was actually a really compelling battle. And I mean, Drum, just to, an overview, uh, Drum produced kind of a scintillating second half performance. They got three goals at critical junctures in the game, and that's what propelled them to victory. But the strange thing about it was, I was reflecting on the game afterwards, and Clonality actually played quite well. I mean, they were very effective in terms of how they went about the game. Uh, you know, they utilised Cote de Van. Now, they were very dependent on Cote. And I did say in the lead up to the game that if they were to beat Drum and Inch, they would have to get goals. And they actually failed to do that. I think Drum and Inch managed to kind of nullify or subdue Casey Hennessy um, and limit the damage she could inflict. But, you know, on the whole, Quite an impressive performance by Clonality, but Drum and Inch, what can you say? Like their ability to turn it on, you know, when the need was greatest in that second half, when the game was in the melting pot, they got that goal after halftime. Neil Tracy, superb individual goal. They followed it up then with, with Eamon McGrath's flick. She flicked it over the keeper. And I thought that was as dramatic a goal as you will get in the county final. To me, it seemed like the ball, I don't know what others will think, but it seemed like the ball hung in the air for an eternity before it actually landed in the net. And then they obviously finished the game off, of course, seeing Michelle Woodlock's late goal. So, I mean, but that is what you're up against for Drum and Inch. I mean, they are able to deliver at the clinical moment when the need is greatest. And they demonstrated that yet again last Saturday. Yeah, because like you, I suppose, leading up to the game, I would have thought if Cologne here to win, they'd have to make sure Drum don't get early goals, which they did. They'd have to lead from the front instead of trying to chase it. And they did all that. But I wonder then at halftime, you know, only up four points, eight, four. And then as the second half progressed and drum grew more and more into it, Clonty nearly run themselves, you know, into a standstill or or they didn't seem to have another gear when drum found another gear. Yeah, I, I think they probably lacked that reserve of energy in the second half. I mean, they completely swarmed drum and inch for much of the first half. You know, in the middle third, they dominated the middle third. The lights of Emer Luckman was was incredible there. Clola Quirk similarly uh, had a huge influence on the game. And even, you know, players like Kirk, Courtney Ryan getting forward, I think she got a point as well. So very impressive in the first half when it was always going to be a matter of could they sustain it. Like, Drum were always going to produce some kind of a fight back in the second half. And the question was, would Clan Alti be able to drain them? Um, and limit the damage, but they just weren't able. I mean, you know, you have to say it as it is, creaks appeared in, in the Clonality def defence when they shouldn't have. I mean, Emer McGrath should not have been allowed in for that second goal. Similarly, uh, the last goal, I mean, poor uh, Teresa White and goals, who had a fine game, let, let's be said, but I mean, she knows she made an error there, and those errors will really cost you when it comes to drum and inch, they remind me a little bit of the Dublin senior footballers back in that, in that glorious era, the five in a row, the six in a row, whatever, whereby, you know, it was that critical 15 minute window after half time that they would strike. The likes of Conor Callaghan would, would get forward and pop in a goal. And, and that's what drum did to Clonality the other day. And I think from, from speaking to some of the drum players afterwards, there was no sense of panic in the dressing room at halftime. Now, I know they wouldn't say it anyway if that was the case, but they are experienced enough. They're now four-time county champions. They've seen this kind of thing before, and that might have proved to be the difference. I think Clonality might have realised, geez, we're, we're in this position now. You know, I mean, we really we really have a shot at it now, guys. And, and maybe it got to them that little bit. Maybe that little bit of experience told even though it's still in a fairly experienced cloud side in itself. But I think Trump just had that extra edge and probably individual class was what won out. Yeah, and as well, I suppose we talked, you mentioned it there as well, Clonty didn't score a goal and they didn't really threaten the goal. I think bar puck outs um, from points or wides, 
Uh, Quiva Burke, I think when he handled the ball maybe once or twice after that, there was no actually clear cut goal chance or shot on her. Um, was that because testament to the drum and defence, especially the full back line, or is it just clone to your lack of maybe that goal score and trash up front? To a certain extent, it was. Well, I don't think they're lacking it. I mean, I think Katie Hennessy is, is a pretty potent goal threat. I think she's as much of an attacking threat as you will get in the county at the present moment in time. I think maybe, you know, Drummer or Clonaldi were hitting a lot of points from out the field. They were kind of going slightly more direct. And I think maybe had they brought Casey out the field and looked to counter quickly, particularly in that second half, because... I don't think Clonaldi were able to transfer or transition the ball up the field quickly enough in the second half when when Drum were in the middle of that purple patch. Now, this is easier said than done, but what Clonaldi needed to do was shift the gear, get the ball and transition up the field at pace. Now, admittedly, they did keep, you know, tagging on points and Coit was, you know, typically consistent with her freeze. She gave another masterful performance and you have to laud that. I mean, she's an awesome player. But they had Eamon McGrath on the other side and they had the goal threat. And I think when you look, when you measure it up player by player, I, I think Trump probably have that little bit extra individual class, particularly in an attacking sense. I mean, you know, they have the likes of Miriam Campion there. Even Murray Eveston is a centre-back who who I think likes to get forward. Uh, you contrast her maybe to Claude Quirk, who holds the holds the centre a little bit more, uh, plays a little bit more of a defensive midfield, or, you know, that kind of role. So I, I, I don't think it was for lack of an attacking threat. I think what Clonaldi needed to do was kind of shift the game plan during that second half, and they didn't really do that. But that is a very hard thing to do when you're up against the storm. And it was a drum and inch storm in that second half. Yeah, is there any particular players that you were most impressed by in that drum and inch team that I suppose especially in the second half? Well, look, I mean, Eamon McGraw got man the match on the day. I gave her our player of the match rather on the day. I would probably rate her as player of the match as well. But I think it, it was the all round, you know, as well as the individual brilliance, the all round collective class of drum and inch was, was hugely impressive and came to the fore again. You know, I think even in that last you know, following Michelle Woodlot's goal, they, they rocked off, they rattled off three points there. I think Miriam Campion got one of them. She was impressive going forward. Aoife McGrath, you saw she came forward, or she pushed forward at one point, and I think got a point from the wing. And I think that was demonstrative of drum, the way drum play. Because, I mean, uh, you know, the, the way they attack from the half-back line, the Eamon McGrath goal, where did that come from? That was a de long delivery by Mairead Eveston, as far as I can remember, which McGrath got on the end of. So that is the way drum play. And, you know, they have they, they have had years to mould and perfect it, and they've really become good at it. They're what I call a very dynamic team. The question, I suppose, facing them now is, is can they go on and kind of right the wrong of last year? Because I would imagine Eamon McGrath hasn't forgotten that that Saturday uh, in in Cork last year, whereby she missed the last minute free. And I don't know people will have noticed Scarif are going to low Clare County champions again. There's a potential showdown with them on the cars. And I think that would be very interesting. And I certainly believe that there is an All-Ireland in this drum team. I think they were a little bit off the pitch against Sarsfields in the delayed 2020 semi-final last year. But I think Pat Ryan is a very astute coach. I think he's a very intelligent um, and grounded figure. And I would say he has that in the back of his mind. Now, Drum won't be looking too far ahead, but I definitely feel there is potential for an All-Ireland title in this Drum team. Yeah, it certainly is. If they can get on a roll, I suppose they'll have a huge test the next day out, two weeks signed, they're playing Waterford champions, De La Salle, who have amongst their, their ranks, and uh, none other than Beck Carton, I suppose one of the best forwards in the country. So that'll be a huge test and something different as well. They haven't played... You know, in other years they've come out and they've played Limerick teams and Clare teams and Cork teams, so they won't they won't know much about this Della Salle team. But um, back to the county final, just one final thing, I suppose. You know, we had a good weather, we had a great crowd. As an overall spectacle, how would you rate it as a final down through the years? I mean, I I don't think it really sprung to life probably to the second half. I would rate it fairly highly as a spectacle. I think it was I think it was very compelling. 
uh, particularly in the second half when when the drum revival started, I think there was a real sense of febrile excitement and and tension there, and that really is what you want in a you know in a game in the decider in the county final. And I think you know Clonalty and Drum, obviously the two best teams in the county, without a shadow of a doubt. But this year has been very hugely competitive overall, both at senior and at intermediate level. And we'll see with the intermediate final now between. Um, between Shannon Rovers and Bursley, that should be intriguing this weekend. But I, I think certainly last Saturday, as the showpiece again, event in the club calendar, um, it, it it was a good endorsement of the game. I compare it to the you know to yesterday's uh, yesterday's county final between Kilowan and Kildangan, which only really took off in the last ten minutes. I thought I thought Saturday's game had more to it. I mean, first half was a little bit subdued and out quite dominant. But you know, people were asking questions. People were saying, "Jesus, will Drum, will Drum be able to claw this back?" And, and that is what you want in a county final. You know, you want the sense that an upset is on the cards. And I think that was no, it wouldn't have been a massive upset for Clonalty to have won. But you want, uh, you want drama. And I think, I think last Saturday I delivered that. And I think it is, it is reflective of the health of club, club Camogie and Tipperary overall. Um, and I think there are plenty of those players on the field that obviously some many are already on the tip intercounty panel. I think you will see some more come into the panel under under um, under Dennis, the new manager Dennis Kelly. And I think similarly, uh, he'll have a look. He'll certainly have a look at this weekend's intermediate final because there are a couple of very very talented individuals on both those sides as well. Very good, Thomas. Thanks a million for your for your analysis there and. Uh... We look forward to hearing, uh, no doubt, uh, reading your report in this week's uh, copy of the Nina Guardian. And for all your coverage of the, the FBD C- Insurance Senior Championship, thanks very much on behalf of Tipperary Camogie. After Saturday's game, uh, we got the reaction of some of the Drummond Inch players. Uh, Emer, a goal in seven points today to help your side win their fourth county final in a row. Uh, how are you feeling after that? Oh, just absolutely delighted, George. You know, um, I don't believe we'll battle there again today as we knew it would be with Clonty. You know, we've played them the last three years now and... <laughs> the battle is getting tougher every time and you know um, a huge team performance there today and you know thankfully it was enough to get over the line so absolutely delighted and like you said you've played each other so often and I suppose you know each other so well and I think they set out to kind of stop you hurling in the first half but when it opened up in the second half you really got going and those three goals were crucial oh yeah definitely sure Do you know as saying goals goals, goals win games and look you know he came hard at us in the first half like we knew it, that they would like and we were probably on the back foot there for a long time in the first half. But, you know, we got a couple of points there to settle us down there before half time. So I think there was only four in at half time. And we kind of just came out then in the second half and, and played as good as we could. And, you know, Trassie got a brilliant goal there, kind of set us up for the second half. And we kind of just ploughed on from there after that. Well done, Emer. Thanks very much. now by Mairead Evson, captain of Drummond Edge team. Mairead, your thoughts after that win? Oh, Jara, absolutely delighted. You know, really, really tough match to get over. And I think it makes those wins just all that sweeter. Um, Clonty really, really threw everything at us today. We struggled, you know, probably for 40 plus minutes. Um, and only in the last few minutes we really got going. And you can see there, that's when we got most of our scores. And at half time, you know, were you worried or what was at half time? No, we weren't worried. You know, we were only four points down and we were only getting going. Um, so you know we knew we had 30 minutes now to play in a performance and we needed to get the heads right and that's exactly what we did when we came out in the second half and Neve Tracy got a key goal there at the start of the second half she's doing that all year uh, yeah. she's a phenomenal player oh Tras is just top class you know when she's on form for us you know there's no stopping her um, you know she got going there took the ball and just kept going she had her eye on goals and that's exactly what she got and you'll celebrate this tonight Mered oh we will Jerry. we won't forget it so for part two of the podcast I'm joined, delighted to be joined by Emma Flanagan from Newport Banner Hinch and Lisa Kyle of Killawan McDonough's and we're here to talk about the upcoming FBD Insurance Intermediate Final happening this Saturday. It's a showdown between Shannon Rovers and Burris Lee at 3 p.m. in the County Commode Grounds of the Rag. Um, thanks a million, Emma and Lisa, t- for joining us. Give us a bit of an insight into both teams. So, Emma, I might just start off with you. Um, I suppose you played Sh- Shannon Rovers in the semi final, 10 points to 1 6. It was a low score and an off game. Um, Maybe your thoughts on, on Shannon Rovers as a whole, as a team, and their strengths? Yeah, sure. Look, it took us about, I think, 20 minutes to get our first score. Like, they were just so strong. They came out, like, really hard at us, and we weren't really expecting it. I think we got a bit of a shock. Like, it took us 20 minutes to score a point. Like, they were all over us in the, in the first 20 minutes. 
um, so it kind of just showed like that they were ready for the match and ready for us and they had their work done. They kind of played a sweeper in front of her. We were playing two inside and it kind of suited them way more than it suited us really. Like it was like they were dropping every ball and we were dropping every ball in on top of her and she was just slobbing it back into her back and putting like they were putting major pressure on her back the whole way through the first half. And that's kind of how they got their first like five or six points, which put us on the back foot straight away, really. But did you think the wind, I suppose, was a big factor that day, I think, for both semifinals, wasn't it? Yeah, sure. The weather wasn't great, really, but sure, the weather is the same for both teams. But um, yeah, the wind was tough. But like then again, it shouldn't really take 20 minutes to score your first point in any match, really, not to mind the semifinals. So um, I think they were just ready for us. And that's that's what it showed in the first 20 minutes. And I suppose, Lisa, then just was the Boris Lee game, you know, I suppose was probably one of the highlights of the championship so far. Um, maybe not for he, but just the drama, I suppose, as a neutral, it was just a fantastic contest. And I suppose, did you feel, you know, you bet Boris Lee earlier on in the championship, I think it was only a single point. Did you feel they have improved since then or, you know? Um, so, yeah, um, we bet um, Boris Lee early on in the championship, but by no means were we taking that for granted it was only by the narrows the margins that we got over them in the championship. Again, they had had a busy week that week. I think they had been out in an intermediate match and an under-16 or underage match in the same week. Um, so we knew that they were possibly tired coming into that game. Um, uh, I think we were probably definitely not the favourites going into the semi-final. Um, but we didn't let that kind of affect us either because we knew we we had still got the win over them in the uh, group stages. Um, they, but we, as, as well as that, we weren't taking them for granted. They're a phenomenal team and have um, a super mix of like um, experienced girls and they're backbone by a very strong under 16 team that won the county final last year. Um, so they have some uh, new uh, girls on the scene that um, were lively and fit and young and we always knew they were going to cause us a bit of bother um, from the off like. Yeah that's interesting because I suppose we all know how good Julianne Burke is and even experienced players like Teresa Ryan and Eve McGrath but what impressed me most probably against Eve was you know the Katie Fitzgerald, the Eve Fitzgerald I think she finished with three points. Yeah. Um, Eve, Emma Marr yeah. goal as well. Yeah. Danielle Ryan is another girl there. She's lively. Um, uh, you'll have your hands full with her. Like, um, she's definitely one to watch for. And then they have um the girl of the Beavens is I think it's Ava Beavens as well. Um, she mightn't always be starting, but you know that she's probably going to be introduced at some stage and is going to upset the thing for you as well. Um, so they have um a great mix um of what like that. Um, Julianne having plenty of experience and Teresa Ryan back now is a major addition uh, to them as well because it kind of gives Julianne a bit of freedom I suppose as well um, uh, so and you, I suppose you still got four goals against them which was a lot yeah, but got them early. Going, back, going back there as you were saying there with Emma as well the weather conditions can have a huge impact on the game like um, it the rag is a very big open field and if it's a windy day um it can have a huge impact on the game like just like it did in the second half of the game on saturday when drum came out in the second half and um they had a, a super performance in the second half with having the wind i suppose was an addition then too and just on that would you always start just curious would you if you won the toss would you always start with the wind like in the county final uh, definitely, I would always start for in whether it's challenge match or uh, championship or county final. I think when you're getting the advantage, take it. I know we got off to a fantastic start and we probably had to face into a second half tired and against the wind. But I still don't think I'd change my mind. I think um, if you can get ahead of it at all um, when you're fresh. Um, now look. Not, it obviously doesn't always work out that way, but um, uh, I just think when you when you're lucky enough to win the toss, uh, keep going when your luck is good. I suppose. Yeah, exactly. And wind obviously can always die out as well. 
Um, yeah. Emma, just I suppose back to Shannon Rovers. Say you would have played them in the group stages and you played them obviously in the semi final. Did you know was it an improvement in that time? And do you think they're stronger uh, this year than last year, maybe? Last year they were quite good as well. Like we were kind of going out a bit worried the first the first round of the championship. They were our first match out and they had they had played, they were really good. Like they were in time to find the week the year before. So we were kind of a bit nervous of them and we were nearly a bit shocked that we came out with the wing in, in the first championship match, which is great for us, but kind of gave us a boost as well. But no, I think yeah, they've definitely improved. Like they've a lot of young girls who have come on like a lot since last year. Again, like they've they've been they have like honest Saturday and goals, they've those like the backbone of the team, but they also have a lot of young girls coming up, like pushing on with their with their fitness and stuff. So I think they are like a really like I think they're a growing team more so, like they're getting better every year because new girls are improving, the younger girls are improving, and then they have the backbone as with Beanie and um Anya pushing them on as well. So I yeah, think they're only really gonna get better really. I think their whole half back line could be county minors, Emer Fogarty, yeah. Franks. Yeah, they're all very young, but like doesn't <laughs> they're nearly better young because they're they can run around you and like around you literally just with the pace of them so I think they had nearly maybe was it eight county minors in total yeah like, they're um, so young like they're fish yeah. yeah and do you think uh, Lisa that the fact Shannon Rovers maybe lost the last two finals do you think that's an advantage yeah. going in to the finals Shannon Rovers are definitely going to be hungry this is their third year on the trot in the county final um, and I think prior to that they were in three junior finals uh leading up to that so they're well used to the rag and they know what is required um they'll definitely be um very hungry to get over the line this year and push on and get to the senior ranks because like that what emma said like they have uh a lot of girls coming there together like a county minors any team that can have a county minors is a lucky uh, lucky team like um some teams are lucky to have maybe one or two or any at all so yeah. um if it's probably they probably feel that their time is 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 right and the time now is the time for them to go up if if they ever are to go up and as well as that i was just wondering i suppose obviously your semi final the drama of it and they came back from behind and you know there was kind of nearly Seen nearly like winning the county final after with the supporters coming on the pitch, which was only natural. But is there any fear that maybe that was their county final? Would they be able to get down to earth and build it up again for, for Saturday? Uh, look, do you know what? It took 90 minutes um, for Bursley to, to cross the line um, and get over Killer One that day. Um, but I think that will really stand to them this weekend. I think they showed great character. Um, to, to stay going and get over the line for a finish like that. I don't know, it was a it was for ourselves, it was a bitter pill to swallow. But um uh like anyone that can stay going and um and, and get over four goals as well like after like, four goals easy, yeah right I think Bursley went down five or seven points um at one stage I think we could have been f- five or seven points up at uh, half time of not ordinary time let's just say and sure, if you were five or seven points um, ahead in a in a game in a game with a five or seven point lead, you you know the, it's very easy to drop the head. They didn't. Far from they were coming out as as hungry as ever in the second half, and they came fighting. They came back fighting um, um, in the second half and got, got it back to the draw. And even at that, like they they stayed knocking over the points. It wasn't as if they. Uh, went for for goal glory or anything like that. They stayed tipping away, knocking over the points, and points add up at the end of the day as well. Yeah, very. It was a very in fairness, very um, very mature performance for such young players. Yeah, as well, the way they I, I, the heads. I think it was great character um to to overcome that game and like that as you're saying, Jerling, with the like. They have a couple of the experienced girls, but a lot of their forwards are still quite young. For them to um stay going like that, it shows just what they're what they're made of, you know, and that maybe experience um isn't always the thing that gets over line, but they, they seem very composed um and stead going, so did it um fair play to them. 
And Emma, just again, I suppose on, on Shannon Rovers, if Monochny, I suppose, is always a danger in near the goals, and you know, obviously she's excellent on freeze and you know, and from play, but she's she spent most of the second half like, with G, I suppose, out further, maybe out around midfield. I know the wind was against them. Would you would you think, I suppose, is she better? To, would you where would you play her? I suppose if you were the Shannon Rovers manager, do you think she should sure, be in the goals? Match or? Is going really, like you kind of have to play when what well, each match is different, like you could. So much as the ball could be driven into her and she could get two or three goals, but if the ball's not going in, there's no point in having a player like her stuck inside either. I know like she might be a goal danger and all, but like in a big match, you kind of need to be tipping them over, as Lisa said as well, like points add up at the end of the day. So do the goals, I suppose. But like I think it depends how they'll have to play with with how the match is going. I think if she's needed outfield, she's an experienced player, she's a strong player she can score from the halfway line anyway. Like, so if the, if the ball's not going in, I think she's probably, they should play her out. Like, you know, cause she will get the points that they, at the end of the day. But I think if they're, if they're going, like if the, the match is going the way we were playing the other day and the ball was going into them, I think she's, she's more of a danger in there. Cause she will snap the ball and she will get the goals that are needed, I suppose. Yeah. And we saw in the semi-final, um, on your start, we looked to, Picked up an injury against E. Oh yeah, she was behind rack in the first in the first five minutes. There, she was in agony for the whole match. I was beside her, but hopefully now she's okay. I think. She's yeah, good. hopefully she'll be okay, and you know both teams she, will have yeah. a full full panel to choose from. But um, obviously because her puck outs could be massive as well. The distance. Massive, she could get yeah. Even out. just to have her like I'm obviously in the fours. Like even just to have her in a fours ear like isn't easy sometimes because she's nearly like. In your ear for the whole match, she's not just a normal goalie sitting back in the goals, like she's out on top of like you, like as if another back nearly. So if yeah. she puts pressure on all the forwards, just even her presence there around you, like is enough sometimes to put pressure on a forward. And Lisa, I suppose what I suppose going to put the gun to your heads now. Who do you think will win and, and maybe why? Or um, I suppose it's very hard to call it, to be honest with you. Um, I think it, it is very hard to call, but um, I know Shannon Rovers will definitely be hungry. Um, but I think um, uh, firstly, with um, the game against ourselves, I think we'll really stand to them. Um, and they have proven now that they um, we can overcome close um, close games, and they're um, so. If the game happens to be close this weekend, I think that might send them and they'll be able to get over the line. Um, now, I do think it will be very close and hard to call. I think, um, as you were saying there, free takers um, could have a big uh, impact on the game this weekend. Like you have Aoife Malachny there, who is, has fantastic experience and has given phenomenal service to both club and county. And she has um, been in this, she's been gearing up for these occasions um, on numerous uh, times at this stage. Um, so she'll know what um, is required to get over the line this weekend. And then you have Aideen Hogan on the other side, who probably inherited the job when Nicole wasn't available to them uh, uh, this year. Um, and she has showed great leadership um, and uh, has, has um, really stood up to the mark at vital times in games throughout this year. Um, Aideen, I think, is her captain as well. She's been a really good leader for them. And I think um, going by her form uh, throughout the championship, her confidence have, would have really have grown as well. Um, so I do think both of those players and uh, outside of, um, say, their roles of free takers, they both have a big contribution to the game from the general run of play as well. Um, like that, I wouldn't be taking my eye off either of them if I was a defender. Um, so I wouldn't. Um, and a, a lot, uh, there's a lot of other girls there like um, Shannon Rovers, Celine Guyne and Laurel and Anne. Like if they're given any bit of room or space, they're deadly in front of goals. Um, so so they are. Um, equally on the other end, then you have, uh, as we mentioned, the younger girls from Bursley. Um, 
uh, who will be putting the pressure on as well. But um, again, they, um, Shannon Rovers have Anya Slattery, who is a um, top class keeper, and um, she'll she'll block a, a lot of blocks. So I think you know knocking them over there might be might be a good call. Um, there she doesn't let too many pass them. And look, I know Shannon Rovers. She would probably got. She, she got injured a knock I think the last day but Shannon Rovers will be doing everything to get her right for this weekend because they won't want to be without Anna Slattery um, she's a she's a massive key player for them yeah great stuff there Lisa and yeah like you mentioned the free tables in Gaideen 12 points against E and 9 of them from place ball so phenomenal scoring yeah. and even yeah. knocked me equally very good I suppose Emma so I think Lisa's going to go with, with Boris just about. And um, what about you? Who do you reckon could win this one and maybe why? Uh, yeah, like as you, as Lisa said, like it's going to be hard to call. Like both semifinals were like to a nail. Like everyone gave everything. Like we lost by a point, which isn't easy. And the girls went to extra extra time. Like so like it is going to be tight. Like it's not going to be a runaway for either team. But I think by playing both of them, like we've played both. And I just think... I don't know, I know we lost to Shan Rovers in the final, but I think Bursley just had that little more, I don't know, like every ball is like the last ball, the winning game, the winning ball for them. Like they give everything to every ball, like even the start of the game to the end of the game, like every like rock is the same for them. I think that's what will probably get them over the line, maybe. I know Shan Rovers are very good and they fought to the end in our match as well, but I just think Bursley this year are just playing such good hurling. Um, even from the very start of championship, like they were fighting as if it was every match was kind of like a county final for them. Yeah, it's um, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And just just on the championship, I suppose, Emma, you know, it was was uh it was the seven teams all together, everyone played everyone, and like literally people were, to, were taking results off each other. It was you could yeah, like any game. Was, I don't think anyone stayed on top of the table or anyone stayed on the bottom of the table. Like it was just like every match was like you nearly say, oh, this team would win this team, but like you nearly say, the opposite team is going to win because no, everything you thought was going to happen didn't happen. So like you never knew what was going to happen in a match, and that was kind of what made it better too. Like you actually didn't know, and even when you thought you were safe, you actually didn't know if you were going to be safe or not to get into the semi final because everyone was just playing so well. Like every match was nearly like two or three points in it. Like there was nothing between the teams, and that's I suppose it's a good thing really because like the semi-finals like both semi-finals are good like there was no runaways and like even in the final you can't even say that th there's going to be a team to definitely win it which yeah. is what you want really in championships yeah Lisa I'm sure you will agree there was a very close competitive championship right from the start and you know even Boris topped the group I suppose but by literally by one pint and the next three teams all finished on equal pints and yeah. not between the bottom teams yeah. either so Amazing. No, definitely for me, it was the standout um competition this year um uh, uh in the championship. Like I, there was literally only a puck of a ball, not only in the semi-finals but uh throughout the whole championship. Like as Emma said, like every day we were coming off the field, racing to the cars, checking who bet who, what way was the table going to be, and even as you're saying there, like first Lee came in at uh at the top of the table with eight points and everyone else came in on the exact same amount but like our like our position came down to the game against Newport in the group yeah. stage and if we had lost to Newport care would have gone through and um, also um I think on the same evening we were playing Eve Bursley were playing care and if care had bet Bursley that day Bursley were going to be gone out of the competition with debt because they won the top of the group like it was just crazy yeah, it was a weird one yeah uh, out but that's what made it so exciting and so interesting to be a part of um I suppose um which I like enjoyable I suppose as well and nerve-wracking but um no definitely um a really good um uh intermediate championship this year and like the amount of people like um uh supporters and like um that were at games and stuff like that the amount of people that have came to me and said, God, I didn't realise how good the intermediate camogie was. And um, some people even said to me, they started going to their first camogie matches this year and they didn't miss one for the rest of the year after that, after seeing their first game, which was great to hear as well that, you know, 
and people are showing the interest in camogie, you know. And so it was cracking. It was a cracking um, championship. And um, I wish both teams um, all the best uh, at the weekend yeah. uh, in the county final. I've no doubt it will be an absolute cracker. Yeah, <laughs> that's great comments there and great to hear that feedback too. And look, like you said, it, it was so close that, you know, you, it could easily be the two of you preparing for a, 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 a final and I, and I could have had someone from Boris and, and uh, or Shannon Rovers on. That's literally how close it was when you think back on it. Like, um, you know, one point in your game, having to go to two rounds of extra time, couldn't have been any closer of semi-finals. And I suppose that was reflective of the whole championship. And let's hope that the final will be the same and it, yeah. it, it live up to the, I suppose, the standard and the excitement of the championship so far. And, um, you know, as you say, uh, best luck to both Shannon Rovers and Boris Lee. So that game is happening this Saturday at 3 p.m. Uh, in the County Camogie Grounds. And we wish both teams very best luck. Lisa and Emma, thanks a million for joining us on the Camogie Report podcast. Thanks, Jeremy. We had three other finals last weekend on Saturday morning. Nina Airog and Silver Mines uh, played out a really exciting uh, FPD Insurance Senior Shield final. Uh, an early goal by Silver Mines from a penalty put them ahead, and it was kind of three points between them for most of the game. Nina pushed hard for a goal uh, to equalise at the end, but then um, Silver Mines broke up the field, a counter attack, and scored another goal this time by Nicola Butler to seal the, the win on a final scoreline of three goals and 11 points to 14 points. So uh, very exciting match there to finish the year for both Silver Mines and um, uh, Nina. Grace O'Brien had 10 points from for Nina, six from play and four from, for, or six from freeze and four from play. So she was certainly on sound for Nina. Caroline Brown also finished with three points and Ava O'Brien with a point. For Silver Mines, the goal came from their, from a penalty, the first goal from Ashton Carey. Uh, Anna Stapleton also got a point. Ellen Cunneen got 7.6 from Freeze, Nicola Butler with 1-1, one, one. Keir Ryan with a point, Quiva Carey with a goal, and Elaine Murphy with a point. Uh, then on Sunday morning, we had the FPD Insurance Junior A Shield final, and that was between Holy Cross, Valley Cal, and Templemore. Templemore got off to a blistering start in that game with an early goal um, from Iris Kazier. Uh, she slotted the ball to the back of Holy Cross, Valley Cal net in the first few minutes. Um, but you know, Holy Cross settled into the game. Maeve Ryan was excellent for them. So too was Julie Brennan. And they got scores um, at half time. Then uh, it was Holy Cross who led by a goal and six to one five. Uh, it was Holy Cross really were on top then for all the second half. Um, Maeve Ryan again opened the second half scoring with two points in quick succession. Followed close to a point from Robin Fitzgerald and Claire Stakelham. Uh, then Julie Brennan got a goal. So... Holy Cross really kicked on from there and dominated the second half and uh, ran out uh, winners there on the final scoreline of 3 13 to 1 8. So, Holy Cross Ballycal Junior A Shield champions this year. And then the big one on Sunday morning, of course, was the Junior B final. Uh, that game took place in Sean Tracy's GA uh, in Kilcommon between Portro and McCarkey Boris. In the end, it was McCarkey Boris who ran out comfortable 12 point winners on the final scoreline. Of one goal and 14 points to five points, but they certainly didn't get it all their own way. Uh, Port Rome made them work very hard for the win, especially in the first half, where it was very little between the sides. Um, at half time, the score was five points to three. Early in the second half, Port Rome scored another point from a free from Trisha Hadron, who actually got all of Port Rome's five points all from frees. Um, she was playing at centre back, had a great game at centre back, and then came up the field to score uh, frees and 45s. Um, but she reduced the lead to just one point but after that Sarah Corcoran stepped up and really took the game by the scruff of the neck she was moved out to midfield at half time from wing forward and she put in a master class display uh, in the second half took over the free taking duty scored a couple of frees uh, also scored a few points and then uh, scored a goal as well from midfield um, a really good second half performance from Sarah Corcoran who was uh, the captain of the Tipperary under 16 teams this year this year she finished with one seven altogether, one six was scored in the second half alone. And uh, she had other plenty of players that played well around her as well. Kay Ralph was very good throughout the middle of the field. Maeve Hackett grew into the game as, as it as it went on there in the second half. Alicia Carney was very good. Quivo Mara got a point. Katrina Walsh had two points. Um, their half back line I thought was very good. Maria Canan, the captain of the team, at wing back Karen Mullins, centre back and Amy Callan, 
Um, on the other wing, all had really good games from Portro as well. Nestle Driscoll was very good in the goals, dealt with everything that came her way. I thought Ashley Sheedy had an excellent second half there, full back. Uh, already mentioned there, Trisha Hallard, very good at centre back. Claire O'Brien, very good in the first half. Um, and then up in the forwards, like the Yasmin Madden, Michelle O'Halloran, all worked fierce hard, um, especially when they didn't have the ball and you know, won a lot of crucial frees that that uh, Trish came up and scored. But in the end, they hadn't enough really um, firepower uh, up front uh, to counteract McCarkey's, uh, some fine scoring from McCarkey, especially there in the second half when the game opened up. Really impressive display by McCarkey Boris. In the end, in the end, um, they're no doubt the the best player in the junior B, best team in the junior B championship this year. Deserve winners won all their games uh, in the league and championship. Uh, had some really comprehensive victories there, and will do very well next year in the junior A. They lost the junior B final last year, obviously to Lara, and have come back and won it now this year. And um, I expect them to do very well in the junior A championship next next year. Um, many of those character players will also be out in action this weekend. We have the FPD Insurance. Junior A or minor A final takes place on Saturday at 12 p.m. That game is before the intermediate final um, between McCarthy Boris and Cashel King Cormix. Um, I know in this podcast we've been covering a lot of the FBD Insurance Adult Championship, but a lot of those players that we would have mentioned, George Deere with Cashel, likes Grace Maloney, uh, Lily Fahey, and Anna Fahey, and all those players that we talked about with McCarthy, Kate Rav, Sarah Corcoran. Uh, Molly O'Dwyer, they'll all be in action now this weekend again, this time in the minor A final. So a really, really uh, competitive minor A final is expected. Two, two best teams in the minor A championship, uh, McCarthy Burris and Cash King Cormix. We wish them both the very best of luck. And that game, as I mentioned, it takes place on Saturday at 12 o'clock at 2 p.m. or at 12 p.m. And then in the other minor, then we also have minor semifinals happening. And a, a minor C final. So the minor C final takes place bank holiday Monday at 2 p.m. also. And that's my Rovers against Newport Balnehinch in the County Camogie Crown. So um again, my Rovers, Newport have both have very good minor teams this year and are true to that minor C final and wish them the very best look. So just before we finish the podcast, just to go through all the fixtures then for this weekend, Saturday, uh, 29th of October, County Camogie Grounds, minor A. Final McCarthy Boris versus Cash King Carmus. That game is at 12 uh, p.m. with uh, Kieran Slattery as the referee. Then in the intermediate county final, then obviously takes place uh, later on in the afternoon at 3 of 3 p.m. Boris Lee versus Shannon Rovers referee Mike Ryan. We have to have a result on that day because the winners will, will be out in Munster the following weekend. Uh, so in the event of a draw, we'll have extra time. Um, then the uh, under 18 C Shield semi final, Killadangan versus Burgess at 6 pm in Pokon on, on Saturday. And Monday, 31st of October, then we have the County Camogie Grounds with the under 18 C County final, Newport Battle Hinch versus Mile Overs at 2 pm, referee Mike Ryan. Then we also have the minor B semi final in Bally Bacon, a double header there, Holy Cross, Bally Cal versus St. Reach's at 12 noon. And uh, referee Luke Forn and Care versus Borland at 2 p.m. and referee Kieran Slattery. So um, that is the minor B semi finals taking place in Bally Bacon. Then we also have the minor B Shield semi finals, Lone T. Rossmore versus Bally Bacon Grange at 12 noon. That game is in Holy Cross. We have the minor C Shield semi final in Ballandary, Kidder One versus Tumi Vara at 12 o'clock. On Sunday, then the 6th of October, we have so that's the following weekend with the Junior B Shield final, Gurton Hu, Glen Gould versus Cash King Cormix. And we have the Minor B Shield semi final, Shan Rovers versus Brian Bruce. Um, so that's the fixtures that are coming up. So that minor game is happening. And then uh, we, also, we have obviously um, some Shield games as well happening there over the next few weeks. So lots to still look forward to in uh, Camogie and Club Championship there in Tipperary. Um, and like I said, the Monster Championship coming as well. So Drum and Inch will take on De La Salle in De La Salle, Waterford uh, on Saturday week. And then uh, the winners of the Intermediate uh, County Final this weekend will also be out the, that weekend as well. Uh, so we look forward to seeing how Tipperary representatives go on. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it, this podcast. Thanks to all my guests. And uh, if you've enjoyed it, be sure to give us a like and make sure you've subscribed to our YouTube channel. And we'll chat to you again soon. <laughs>